Welcome to Cartoonist Cafe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And today, Ed, we're going to look at the worst Frank Miller comic book ever written. Oh, highly controversial. <laughs> <laughs> What's new, man? Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Serializing my Red Room Comics project right now for the early adopters. It's going to see print in 2021. We're working on, working on the contracts with that right this minute. But if you can't wait, uh, three bucks to get you the archive. Issue one is up there right now. And I very reliably uh, post new pages every Tuesday, man. So we're in the middle of... Uh, Pay, uh, the second issue, shit's going strong. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. That's it. I am highlighting Street Angel because Street Angel, this hardcover from Madhouse Books, is officially out of print. I was notified the publisher sent out the last boxes of this to the distributor this week, so if you're watching at home and you don't have this, you can pick it up now, uh, maybe, at your local comic shop or online, wherever you get comics, but it is going fast, and out of print books prices uh, do go up. They're harder to find. I also brought along the Image Collection, Deadliest Girl Alive. These are the more, more recent Street Angel comics in full color. These are some of the proudest comics I've made, so I'm happy to show this off when Beautiful I get a stuff. chance. Beautiful. Uh, this is also available from any comic shops or wherever you buy comics. And uh, pick those up now. Perfect Christmas gifts as we get close to the holiday season. Okay, so you were saying this is your favorite Frank Miller comic? <laughs> Ed, uh I don't even know where to begin with this. This is part of the DC All-Star line, which I think the only other title published was Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely's Superman All-Star. I think there were plans for Wonder Woman and Adam Hughes, but I don't think that ever came out. This is a weird comic, man. Jim Lee and Frank Miller. This is a match made in heaven, right? Uh, doing Batman. The, the characters that they're probably... Jim Lee may be a toss-up between X-Men and Batman, but I mean some of the biggest characters they're associated with. This seems like a match made in heaven. And I'm going to flip through it as we talk about it, but I did not enjoy reading this comic at all. I read it for the first time for this. I was never excited by it um, before you even flip. No, no, right here is perfect. One of the things that we talk about a lot when we talk about comics color and stuff is like the black line fighting against the, the color. And this comic is a great example of that because it's like, is she wearing like half gloves? <laughs> um, and we're going to see a lot of that throughout this like once you point it out then you can't not see it and that's that's the kind of thing that we're talking because we get comments about that what do you guys mean the black line competes against the color like it's that kind of stuff yeah i'll try to summarize that the black is flat it's totally flat and then you go down onto this leg where you have all these colors and all this value and so you have this rounded form what's known as modeling and when you go from modeling in this rounded form to completely flat black that's that's dissonance. You know, you have two two things on the same plane here on the page. One is completely flat, right. and the other one is supposed to look round, and they're next to each other. That's a, that's a conflict. Yes. What we're seeing here is first Robin. Yeah. This, this is Batman, All Star Batman and Robin, and, and at the time it was pitched that you know Miller was this would be a different version of Batman for Miller because he's getting to kind of use Robin in the early days, right? It's like Robin Year One or something. Yeah. There you go. Uh, cut from, you know, when he's part of the trapeze act to Vicky Vale, who has a date with Bruce Wayne. I don't even know if Vicky Vale, what part of con, the, the only way I know her is from like the Kim Basinger. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know she had a little bit of appearance in comics, but I feel like that was in support of that movie more than anything else. Yeah, maybe man. And, and, you know, she's a, you know, she's star reporter, a learned woman, a very smart person. And all she's doing is like fixating on, uh, the date with a super rich billionaire. Yeah. What do I wear? This, this yeah. is, this is. This is embarrassing. Uh, and, and also, let's continue with some embarrassment. Uh, I like Jim, Jim Lee's art. Like, the drawing is fine. But when you see stuff like this, this is me projecting. And I'm imagining, he's like, this is going to be my, this is my big Frank Miller collaboration. And he's going to pull out all the stops and try to do Frank Miller type storytelling. And this is his version of that. We'll see other examples later. And that adds to the embarrassment. Because this, there's no focus here. There's nothing. The, the compositions are whack. Like, he can draw a person and he could compose a nice image, but like page flow and storytelling, that ain't Jim Lee's forte, man. Definitely, the the woman getting dressed for a night for a date, I think, is definitely outside of his uh, his strengths. <laughs> Although I think it's interesting that they do these white uh, panel borders. It's kind of a neat, you know, going back and forth between white and black panel borders. I'll give him props for that. That's fun. I'd steal that. And then these completely colored forms where like you even get the flesh tone is green or red or purple, whatever color they're going with. Charlton cartoonist Nieto, Enrique Nieto used to do that and I loved it. So it's kind of neat. I, I, I'd be shocked if that's what they're referencing, sure not. but it's exactly the same effect. So kind of weird to see here. But moving on, 
nice big uh, background. I, I would call attention to she is living in the greatest apartment I've ever seen in probably a, a very expensive city to live in, I'm going to assume, and she's a journalist. Right. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll um, let it go. Can, can you go, like, like page page like one again? Uh, page one and two. I like the gratuitous in her underwear hanging out drinking a martini scene. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm going to say that, that Bob Shrek, like, like I, I want to kind of call some of his work into question, not discounting his ability or whatever. I need to know what the relationship is between he and uh, Frank Miller because I know they work together in, on almost everything once Long they history. started. I think all the way back to Sin City, I yeah, think. Yeah, and I, that's probably where it started. And I wonder if Bob can be a, a, a substantial letter uh, uh, editor that, that contributes to, to, to the work, man, because there are things here, like Frank Miller does the repetitious captions in all, all of his comics, it's never worked less than here, where it just... Yeah, and what you're saying is this. This caption is, they're always there for me. This caption is, they're always there for me. This caption is, they're always there for me. That's within a four, you know, four square inches. Uh, we're getting the same over and over, and it gets worse than that. Yeah. But, but, I mean, you can point to most pages and show examples of what you're describing of that repetition, where literally, it's the same caption, again and again and again. And, and like... I would think, like, if my editor has my back, he would suggest, like, you know, take one of those out, take two, take take those out. And I just, what I'm calling into question is just, like, I wonder if those conversations happened or if if Bob is just chilling. Let's not skip too far ahead. Let's okay. stick with this repetition. Okay. So, they're always there for me. They're always there for me. These are his parents. He's 12 years old. His parents are going to be murdered here a couple of pages later in front of us. And we never really mourn them. So, okay, here's the murder scene, right? Shot in the head, shot in the head. His parents murdered right in front of him. This is supposed to be some parallel, I suppose, to Bruce Wayne seeing his parents die or whatever, but a totally different relationship. And this this is never really addressed. Yeah. The cops then abduct him. Batman then abducts him, throws him in the Batcave for an extended period of time where he's supposed to eat rats to survive, what is this? It's like, so what weird. are you writing? It's so weird. If I ever liked Batman, and I can't hardly remember that time, I'm not sure I ever really did, wouldn't you hate him after this? And if you don't, what are you... This is your hero. He's kidnapping a 12-year-old who's suffering from certainly PTSD after watching his parents' heads get blown off in front of him. Um, what is this comic about? So I question Bob Shrek and DC and Jim Lee and Frank Miller and everybody who bought and loved this comic... What are you talking about? This is a this is the elite. The billionaire Bruce Wayne gets an opportunity to kidnap a 12-year-old who's suddenly completely orphaned and off the grid. And Bruce Wayne goes, I could use him. Let me track him down. What is this comic about, people? How is, is this so not... Weird. When this came out, didn't we all go, this is the worst comic ever made. Uh, it makes no sense. It's If you did like Batman, doesn't this ruin it for you? What is going on here? Everybody involved... <laughs> What is going on here? I get it. Maybe you're awestruck. If, if you're a letterer or assistant editor or something, you're not going to challenge Frank Miller and Jim Lee. But doesn't somebody involved with this comic look at it and go, we're not publishing this. This is junk. We have, we have Batman. It's Batman. It's our most valuable intellectual property. And now he's kidnapping a 12-year-old kid and torturing him? Great idea for a new series. Awesome. This is how you get some readers. People are going to love this. <laughs> You know, Jim Lee, co-publisher of DC Comics. I, th I think he had a high position at the time, at, at the very least. You don't have enough people to pull you down from uh, the stratosphere and be like, you know what, man? Maybe, maybe rethink that stuff. Like, like there are things in here that I think I see what they're trying to do, and it's a very imperfect new Batman or something. So he's going to be a real douchebag or something. But uh, I, you know, I got about three issues in, and uh, what it felt like to me was, you know, Jake LaMotta, like, watching Trigger Ray Robinson beat the fuck, like, do I need to see my heroes getting pummeled and not going down? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what Frank and Jim were, were doing here to me. Like, we're just like, I, I just don't want to see anymore. I don't want to see you guys getting uh, punch drunk and fucking up. There, uh, you know, the re the reason that I that I mention these repeating things is 
if you're going to repeat these panels, what we establish is how important his parents are to him. Right. And then for the next 10 issues, we more or less ignore that yeah. and just abuse him. Or we've established how important they are, and, and then we're going to abuse him so that it really counts if you're, re- if you're actually reading the words. Uh, I, I do understand if people at home who bought this series weren't reading the words. As you say, Ed, pretty hard to read. There are all of these... Uh, different characters' voices. So we're going to get captions that are Bruce Wayne captions. We're going to get captions that are uh, Grayson's captions. We're going to get captions that are Vicky Vell's. We're going to get captions that are... Uh, Black ca- Canaries. Everybody. Everybody gets their own captions, which it's it's really funny because DC at one point around here, maybe a few years earlier, outlaws thought balloons. Well, these are thought balloons. Yeah. They, they outlawed cloud-shaped thought balloons, I suppose, but that's what these are. They're inner monologues. It's exactly the same content that would be in a thought balloon. It just happens to be in a square box or a jagged edge box. That's so funny. It, it's horrible storytelling. It's bad, very bad storytelling, but it's like Jim Lee could draw. You look at it for what it is, and it's we've seen 500 pages of this. Yeah, I mean, I think that really good drawing could be another debate, uh, looking at sort of art on a bigger scale. Of and course, how yeah. Fits. Yeah, but I'm, t- I'm, talking, I'm talking comics. And But here's the caption of Bruce Wayne saying this Brad is something. We're going to learn throughout the course of this that he's been eyeballing Dick Grayson for a while. Right. It's once the parents get murdered in front of him that, that he swoops in because now is my opportunity to grab this kid that has talent that I've been watching. That's not creepy at all. Right. And then these are Vicki Vell's comments, and she's sitting here being... The more this guy tells me, the less I know. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) What doesn't help me at all is that I'm totally gone on him. I'm having a date with Bruce Wayne. Hot damn. This is some super successful journalist. Has the greatest apartment we've seen in comics. Is a journalist, which means has a vocabulary. Yeah, like, what's going on? Does she have a parasite in her brain that has, like, rendered her unable to think and, and... What a rough comic, man. It's it's. I, I don't know a redeeming quality. Like I said, I've seen people online defend this, but you know, I look at it and think, is it funny? Is it I? You know, is there something there? And I I don't see any of it. Also, here, here's your like your uh, muted br- brown colors that we've been railing on. Yep, I'm happy to talk about brown. You're doing a superhero comic. The superhero comic. Frank Miller and Jim Lee, the two biggest superhero cartoonists of the last forty years in terms of sales and volume. And this is what we get: brown. Yeah. Yeah, leading up to this. It was so exciting, and let's tone it down so people don't have a seizure or something when they see this. Instead of giving her that yellow blonde hair, let's make it brown. <laughs> Keep it in check. What am I, fa- like, like I said, I only got about three issues in, but um, I don't imagine that Frank Miller wrote this. I think this is Jim Lee try- trying to be clever, and the idea is that it's like every kind of cliche, hit, hit, like hitting on a, a girl, like, you know, very grossly and disgusting and all that stuff. And so, you know, it's about to set her fuse off, right? And and Jim Lee draws an actual Acme fucking Wiley Coyote stick of dynamite with the fuse getting shorter and shorter. At least there's some color. If you remove that, I mean, it's another just brown page. <laughs> it's just so funny, man, because it's so literal. And you think about, like, I know what he's trying to do, but, like, in the context of, like, the the best of comics, it would be done in a metaphorical way. Like there would be some some secondary action that was going to go off or whatever. But they're not, see they're not in sync. These guys aren't in sync because if you wanted to do something like this, it might have sparked Frank Miller to be like, okay, you know what? We're going to have a bomb at the fucking Gotham Bank blow up at the exact moment. So you know what I mean? It's not not a fucking Acme stick of dynamite going off as she. Uh, gets more and more upset at like all the these douchebags coming on to her in or, you know in order to deliver deliver the death blow there um I do enjoy his teeth being kicked out and you see several of them flying through through the it, air but it's a good sequence like like leading up to that and you really feel that energy uh but you know this is what Jim Lee does man like he's good at this kind of thing and you know we're 16 minutes in I did not pick out this book because I wanted to trash it. Uh-huh. I thought these are two creators that are super, you know, well known with Batman. This would be a fun comic to look at and revisit and, and, and really dig into. And reading it, I mean, I would read these in the evenings and just be miserable. Really? Yeah, I hate this. You're a real empath. Well, it's not empath. I could be reading good comics. 
you right, know, and I right. don't have that much time. Like I'm a busy person these days and I just don't have time. This was, uh, this was another one that I was going to pull out. This is Batman versus Green Lantern. Hey, look, color. It's not brown. <laughs> yeah, it's not brown. It's yellow. They, they, uh, set up a meeting with Green Lantern the issue before this because, uh, the Justice League is worried that Batman has kidnapped a 12 year old boy. That seems like a reasonable concern. It's not going to look good through the media lens on superheroes. So the Green Lantern reaches out to Batman to try to talk sense into him. And Batman says, hey, meet me at this address 12 hours later if you want to talk. Paints everything yellow. I mean, it's just stupid. It's just <laughs> dumb. It's like a... So it's like a Silver Age comic. But and with, like, top talent. They make the... There's a point through all this of, like, Robin's got the fastest hands I've ever seen. Like, you don't want to mess with him. And proof of this is Robin steals Green Lantern's ring. Very cool, right? Here's the ring, and now it's gone. I went back through the sequence several times being like, oh, that's interesting. Did he slip it off somewhere? Are we going to see that if you're paying attention? No. No, no. There's no moment. There's no sleight of hand. There's no fun misdirection. There is nothing uh -huh. where he actually steals the ring. And then... And then he goes on to hit him in the throat, and he nearly dies because he crushes his windpipe, and they have to do a tracheotomy. Really? Yeah, that's what happens here. <laughs> in the process of doing the tracheotomy, before this begins, Batman punches 12-year-old boy in the face, you know, nearly knocking him out, because throwing him against the wall wasn't enough. <laughs> you know what this is like, anyway we, we would have loved i this apologize <laughs> for it to everybody at home because this isn't what i want to do with this channel right but i did spend time digging through these and looking at them and trying to find something in them and i found nothing i think we aged out of this man i wonder like if, if like we talked to you know 13 year old ed 15 year old jim how we would feel about these things man yeah maybe a tracheotomy that's, that's hysterical joker uh joker Kills some, kills a woman here in the beginning, punches her in the face, kills her, chokes her out, refers to her as it throughout that sequence. Oh, so they took that from. Uh, oh, dude, it's Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, oh, Nazi, yeah. Nazi yeah, chick. If you if you love all the comics continuity, this maybe is right up your boat. I don't know. I like Dark Knight Returns, but this isn't doing it for me. So anyway, that's all I have to say about it. I'm very sorry that I wanted to that I spent time looking and, and planning to do this video. <laughs> Let's get out of here, man. K favor is like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when the next vids are available. Uh, Street Angel in stores now. Hardcover collection is selling out quick. And it's out of print. Yes. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Um, serializing my Red Room comic strips. Issue one's up there now. And three bucks will get you the archive new strips every Tuesday. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we're doing. You can find links to Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise in the week of November 20th to 26th. If you enter promo code Kayfabe free ship, it's free shipping on any orders of that of those t-shirts and merchandise. Give them the merchandise. Let's get out of here, Jimmy. Read more comics.